We'll start out in New York. I think we first met around 1989. That was also the year a miracle happened for me. I was hired by Saturday Night Live. I got the job because my blood, sweat, and tears finally paid off when my father called Lorne Michaels and asked him to hire me. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. Leading up to that job, I was working very hard, developing and directing my own short films. Adam was on an MTV game show playing a character named Stud Boy. I would fine-tune my scripts, go over my shot lists, rehearse with the actors, work into the late hours, considering every aspect of my comedic vision. Adam would put on a silk robe and ask contestants to guess what celebrity woman he recently had sex with. <laughs> Both of our early creations are currently up on YouTube, and it's really not important which one of them has fewer than 15,000 views. <laughs> There's something about Adam... You know, his work, it, it, it just, it all, it all feels effortless. It almost seems, I mean, I don't want to say lazy because that's not the right word. And <laughs> I, I don't have a better word, so for now, let's go with lazy. <laughs> but under the surface, there's just, there's just so much more to it. I mean, there has to be. I mean, how else can you explain a crazy Hanukkah song that's really, yeah, it's incredible. And it's really just a list of rhyming celebrity names, and yet it goes multi-platinum and has become a holiday radio staple that my daughter forces us all to listen to after we light the candles every year. It's that Adam magic. I bet if a different famous Jewish comedic actor wrote a way edgier song about, let's say, Yom Kippur, <laughs> his representatives would call it embarrassing and beg him not to release it, even if, if they heard that killer opening line, it's time to atone. <laughs> so let's get in the zone. <laughs> Got my dick caught in my zipper. And now it is Yom Kippur. 